Hello traders, hello investors, how are you doing today my friends? Welcome to another video here in the Finance Hydro channel. Today let's talk about the indices, let's talk about the market. I will share some nice trading ideas in this video. So my friends, remember to click on the like button to support this channel. If you are new around here, I invite you to join our community. We are growing nicely and I do believe this video is going to be very helpful to you. All right, so let's take a look at the charts over here. When we analyze the S&P, remember that I told you guys last week, the S&P is in a bull trend because it is doing higher highs, higher lows, right? It's doing this. Right now, today, it's, it's interesting because last week we hit the previous resistance over here as a support and it did work amazingly well. However, it seems we did a lower high today, a lower top. If it confirms and breaks by doing a, a lower low, then okay, the S&P will ruin the bullish bias. It might even engage in a bearish momentum for some time. I don't know for how long, but at the key point, the most important support level, uh, the most important support level that the S&P must not lose is 44.53, this purple line over here, okay? That's the main key point the S&P must not lose in order to reverse the trend. However, if, if it holds in this area and breaks the previous resistance, I do believe we are going to easily fill this gap and potentially fill the second gap up here, which is, hang on, which is my target since the beginning, all right, I have, I have been telling you guys since, well, for a few weeks right now that the S&P has this open gap, any bullish reaction would be just an excuse to buy aiming at this gap. Now, the real question is if the S&P will reach this gap in one single movement or not. I don't know. I do not need to know as long as the S&P does not do any bearish reaction, as long as it keeps above this purple line, Okay, I do believe the bias will remain slightly more bullish than bearish, especially when we look at the daily chart. In the daily chart, we see that S&P, we hit the previous resistance level, which was a support level over here on January 10. We hit this point, we dropped sharply. Right now, we are again below the 21 EMA, but in the weekly chart, in the weekly chart, it seems the 21 EMA is working as a very strong resistance for us. We hit the support level. We did a fantastic bullish candlestick pattern. This is a hammer candlestick pattern. We did a fantastic pattern. Right now, we are going up nicely. We have this resistance to work with. If this resistance will actually hold the S&P and if we're going to do another bearish structure, if we are going to lose this purple line, I don't know. Maybe it will. If this happens, I believe the S&P could retest the previous support levels, like the 4300s down here. That would be my target. But as long as we are above this purple line, the scenario will not materialize. The Nasdaq index also has two gaps to fill. In my humble opinion, as a free trader, as a retail trader, I'm not a, an industry professional. I'm not. I, I am not an expert over here. I'm just a guy sharing my thoughts. And my personal opinion is that the Nasdaq is going to fill both gaps, gap one and gap two. I don't know how, I don't know when, maybe it's going to lose this purple line and a crash again, but it could react and, and uh, out of nowhere, we could fill these gaps as well in a very strong bullish momentum. This could happen. Everything could happen over here, but either way, these are my main targets for now for the short and mid term. I do believe the Nasdaq is holding nicely at its EMA, which is our main resistance in the daily chart. In the weekly chart, just like the S&P, it seems we retested the support level. And right now we are going up nicely. I do believe we are going to retest the 21 EMA in the weekly chart. But I don't know if this is a dead cat bounce. I don't know. No one can possibly know. We can always guess. You may, you may think, oh, this is just a dead cat bounce and the Nasdaq will drop again to, I don't know, uh, 10K, for instance. Well, that's your opinion, but I, 
right now I do not see any crystal clear bearish structure that could support this thesis. I mean, if we lose this purple line, that would be the beginning, okay? That might be an indicator. Either way, for now, I will keep my thesis, I will keep my bullish thesis, and I do believe these gaps are going to be filled in the short midterm. Uh, the 10 year, the 10 year yields, let me see. It seems we are struggling at a resistance. We are far away from the 20, from the 21 EMA. So any weakness sign over here, I think could be a very nice excuse for the yields to do a pullback to their EMA. And this could enhance any bullish momentum on the indices. Now, we have some very nice stocks, which I like to call hot stocks right now. Let's talk about Spotify. Spotify dropped sharply after earnings. It did a very nice gap over here, but uh, it dropped 17% in the first hour. But right now, don't you agree that we, guys, we just hit a support level, this purple line, which we can see in the daily chart. I'm so sorry, we can see in the weekly chart. It is a long-term support level because it was January 2020 and July 2019's resistance level. We are back to 2019's resistance. We are doing a very nice reaction right now. We hit this price level and it is working as a support. Remember, according to the principle of polarity in technical analysis, previous tops are going to work as future support levels and vice versa. Right now, this point is working as a support level. That's very cool. Remember, the market has memory. Some price levels will work nicely because the market remembers some points that were important key points, points that worked as a reversal points for some stocks. The market always remembers these points. So, right now we are doing a very good reaction. Last week, if you ask me, as crazy as this candlestick may look like to you, I think it was a spinning bottom candlestick pattern. If you look in the one hour chart, we are doing for the first time, for the first time in many, wow, in many days, weeks, I don't know, months maybe, we are doing a possible bullish pivot point in the one hour chart. And we are doing a possible bullish pivot point just above a fantastic long term resistance. So Spotify is a very interesting one. I'm not saying it will go up. I'm saying that if it triggers the right bullish structures, it has a very nice and decent risk reward ratio. This is how we work over here, using risk reward ratio to analyze our trades, to enhance the odds in our favor, and to get the maximum profitability we could have in these markets. PayPal, do you think it is reasonable to see PayPal at $123. This week, I'm so sorry, last week it did a gap, losing 24% of its value. I think it is right now trading at deep undervalued territory. Last week it seems it was an exhaustion gap. I'm so sorry, an exhaustion bar. Because very strong bar, very high volume, just to hit a support level, which was February's 2020's resistance. That's fantastic. We are back to pre-COVID levels. I cannot believe we see this happening again. That's a very nice opportunity. PayPal has so much value. It is such an amazing company. It's, it's not going to go to zero, all right? It's PayPal. It is a fantastic company. It, it, to me, it is trading in undervalued territory. Unlike Spotify, we see a glimpse of a bullish structure. Here, we don't see none, all right? There is not a single bullish structure. Maybe you're gonna see double bottom chart pattern over here, but it is just a big maybe. I don't see anything meaningful on PayPal. Disney, it's going to report earnings this week in two days, so let's be aware of that. Disney is already trading in a very undervalued territory, in my humble opinion. This drop over here of 7%, it was just stupid, only because Netflix reported earnings, it's uh, it, it still gave phenomenal results, but okay, we are having a hard time with the competition, we are having a hard time with our streaming service, it's hard to get more subscribers, and we see Disney dropping 7% only because of Disney Plus, right? They are trying to anticipate these revenues, and Disney Plus is just a small share of Disney's revenue. So, I do not believe this is reasonable, 
I do not believe at all. I believe Disney is already in deeply undervalued territory. Uh, two weeks ago, we almost retested, we almost filled this gap, and we did a very nice hammer candlestick pattern with good volume, and right now we are trying to bounce back up. I believe that's an opportunity to buy, in my humble opinion. Of course, we still have yet to see how it's going to play after earnings. Maybe it's gonna drop 24%, right? Maybe. If this happens, it would be just fantastic. Looking through the optic, through the eyes of an investor, I would, I would see this just as an amazing opportunity, all right? But right now, let's just wait. I think Disney is a phenomenal play at this moment, by the way, and a Chipotle. It's going to report earnings just like Disney. We hit a support level two weeks ago. Right now we are trying to react. If by any means Chipotle breaks the previous resistance, I believe we're gonna trigger a bullish pivot point and I do believe Chipotle is going to reverse the trend in the mid long term. It is already in a bull trend in the short term in the one hour chart. So I believe the only thing missing over here is a breakout of uh, 15, 20, that's the key point we should look at. This point was a support level in the past and right now it was a resistance recently. So yeah, I believe this purple line is our main uh, resistance level to work with and if it reverses, I do believe we are going to retest at least $17.76. That's an idea, that's a very nice target to work with. Let's see, right? I am very excited about all of this. Many tech stocks are trading in undervalued territory. However, we must wait for the right bullish structures to appear, okay? I'm not saying these companies are a buy. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, do your own diligence and, uh, well, again, these are my own thoughts and opinions in this video. If this video helped you, if I gave you any interesting idea, remember, click on the like button to support this channel and subscribe if you, if you don't want to miss any of my future contents, all right? So, my friends, thank you very much for your support, for your attention, for your kindness. Thanks a lot. Stay safe. Farewell.